My understanding is some of them there are people in the government think that if I got elected president, it's gonna be a real big problem because I've done said some things in the past that are concerning for relations with other countries. Uh, I, I was actually kind of mean to the Indians once, but I also have always been nice to the Indians. And that's the thing, I'm a very complicated person. You have to actually pay attention to what I say to know that I will be mean to you and nice to you at the same time, but you can kind of tell if I'm nice to you and I've generally not been nice to Z, G, she, whatever you want to call his ass. Or, but I have been nice to the Chinese people because I have a great deal of respect for them and I personally feel like I'm the monkey king. I have reached enlightenment. I'm going to go rule over Jerusalem. I'm going to go build me some idols. I'm going to go have some chill ass people. I'm going to go wake up in bed with my ladies. I'm going to go swim through my pile of gold. I'm going to go walk down the Via de la Rosa. I'm going to go sit there and drink a little coffee. And you know what? You can say what you want. That's my dream, and that's what I believe in. All right, so what I was gonna say to those people at the State Department is, uh, number one, um, I am that person that can pull that off, that somehow the relations continue. It's kind of like Trump, Trump's, Trump's relationship with the, with the Chinos. Trump is a real big dick, but somehow it still works out. It's because you have to. You kind of have to have a relationship, and like, when it comes down to it, our relationship with the world, a lot of it, comes down to that connection with the Chinese. And the Chinese kind of have that same thing about us, where, where they, everything they got has kind of come down to their relationship with us. It's got, but everyone kind of relates to the Japanese, too. That's the thing. Them, them, uh, them Japs. I don't know if I'm allowed to call them a Jap. My grandpa fought in World War II. And the truth is that um, World War II was basically an illegal war that we started. We went, hey, and then we killed them, like real bad. Like it's like nowadays, everyone would have said we committed almost genocide. But the thing is, you can't commit genocide against a group of people that have that many people. So we didn't do that. We just indiscriminately massacred people in Hong Kong with fire, you know, firebombing these paper cities. So it's not just about Hiroshima and Tokyo, and, and it's not, and Nagasaki. It's about Tokyo air raids. All right, so. That brings me down to why Donald Trump is picking a, 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 a Japanese royal family member's descendant to be in charge of the NSA, which actually I heard he's a real nice man. Uh, General Nakasone is who I'm talking about. And personally, that is concerning to me um, just because, like, we basically, we weren't nice in that war. Like, Afghanistan, we're like, oh, here, I'll hold your baby while I'm shooting your husband. Like, I swear to God, that's kind of how we are. Um, um, that's the thing. I do understand that in Afghanistan they don't speak Arabic, and that they, what is it, Pashtun? I don't really know. Done read the Kite Runner. I read that other book by what's his name, Khalid Husseini. Um, one about the sun. I can't remember. I do understand Afghanistan a little bit and the Taliban, and the they're they're on the border of Pakistan, and that border is very major smuggling border for drugs and and. Um, I understand people hate drugs, um, and it's kind of, you kind of feel bad for someone when they become fascist and they fight drugs and it kills their own country's economy, like Duterte, but and you're also like, well, he was that big of a fascist, um, but then it's like, well, it was my fault that I even let him know that he should be a fascist. He wouldn't even have known to be a fascist if I hadn't told him, but then next thing you know, I told him about the drugs and he decided to be a fascist and he screwed him over real bad. All right, so... I think what I'm trying to say is, to all those, to those State Department people is, uh, I'm not gonna judge you that much if, if you have a problem with me right now. Uh, you might be surprised by how much money I have and the relationships I have and how, like, some people just don't wanna fight. And they just say, okay, well, maybe I just wanna continue with my life and continue things as normal. And if John Alexander's real cool and he's actually a pretty reasonable person, because if there's anything I know, the like, one thing I know about John Alexander, he's the most reasonable person I know. John Zandar, sometimes he gets a little bit pissed off when he hears about them jabs, doing things they did. I don't even know what that means. But one time I thought some jabs, jabs tried to murder the entire city of San Antonio. Um, 
but that, I, I, my understanding that wasn't Shinzo Abe. I've known about Shinzo Abe. I've been reading about that man for a long time. He's a very respected man. Um, I'm, I know about Indonesia, biggest Muslim country in the world. Um, and like, but India has the largest Muslim population. Um, I know, I know about Malaysia and that they have a history of being big prudes, and that they really like to keep their streets clean. One time they caned this guy for writing graffiti, but sometimes I think if there's anything I'm gonna cane someone for, it's for defacing really, really nice property. Um, but yeah, so I do, I do, I do understand the world. This was not supposed to be what this talk was about.